No, so it's eight minutes past two in the afternoon right now. At this point, you press the set button again, and if, it ha if the ball's not already touching the sensor, it will start, it will wait till the ball does. I'll show you that in a second. But if we press set now, the ball starts surely. Now, there's not much you can do for <laughs> Try this for eight hours. So the ball rolls down. Um, we haven't had a chance to evaluate the temperature dependence of this by doing it when it's hot and doing it when it's cold without moving the table. So it's really quite warm in here, um, different to the lab. Who knows what effect that has? Here comes the exciting part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do this twice a minute. Hopefully, indefinitely. You can see this position of the server here. So, to avoid bounce when the server turns, we've de de deliberately positioned it to go from full rotation one direction to full rotation the other, and which is close to the top of its rotation, so it effectively slows down slightly um, as it reaches the top. Which is the other end. And it's gone up to 1409. You still have really a time to put it out there. Yeah. There's still quite a shoe on that, isn't there? Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's probably better. I wouldn't touch it at the moment because it's running, but um, if you do run your finger along the edge, uh, the laser catches just that piece, it bumps in the grooves, and then, like, as I said before, the glue. We had light sensors that were automatic, but we've fallen back, so we're just doing a remote control of the gap casting. But uh, obstacle avoidance is still automatic. Yeah. Right, so, uh, I was on with the machine reset. Uh, just reset, just make sure it's the case. So, the servers are lining up. And, uh, I'm going to go forward here and then stop where well, the sensor should have detected the gap. Two banks of coils on at a time, and that's to ensure the train is properly supported at all times. Even goes the other way. So there you go. That's that's the PCBs for you. Um, okay. Okay. Right, so I've just turned the, the coils on there. It's picking up the coils, and you can see there's a there's a, a few mil uh, in between there. As you put uh, more weight on, you can see that it just kind of goes up and down. Uh, and so just without the motor. I don't know if one of you want to. Okay, so we'll just fire up then. Okay. You don't know. <laughs> you know how it works. Do you want to put the lid on or not? Put it on, also? Yeah. Go for it. 
Oh, oh there we go. You know so I'll calibrate the gyro board again, give it a few seconds to set itself up. Then if we switch on the servo supply, it goes into its reset position, which I spoke about earlier, which is the mode it goes into until it receives a command from the push switch. Push switch. And press the push switch, and it starts walking in a straight line. <coughs> if it detects a displacement, it changes to walking its turning mode to compensate for that. Yeah, wow. Right, you see this buckle straight away, so all we need to do is stretch that out. Is the um is the thing set to turn? It's set, yeah. it's set to turn yeah. Oh, it's just getting down. We're it's trying to pull it as little as possible. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, going to make uh, 30 seconds, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was supposed to be 30 seconds in and out, and we thought that would be in though. If it works coming in. Oh, that central boom right now isn't motorised. It's on a ratchet that um, allows it to wheel out so that it doesn't have to work against the motor in the middle when it's not powered. We need these, um, these housings to be taller. We also have a lot of duct tape which uh, hinders any smooth <coughs> outgoing. Uh, not the way. Yeah. No, we got a bit to go. But as you see, like this would be happening over here as well, so this would be balancing out any issues here, unless there was some major snag. So there was, there was like some investigation, uh, some investigation into maybe some feedback in the uh, the booms themselves. You know, if, if something's going wrong, it should abort. But we realised the smartest feedback was just us screaming at it <laughs> and having a big abort button ready to use. Did, if you had the problem. Did you ever consider joining the ends of the booms at all? Or do you mean or yeah. or through some kind of like sliding hole or anything or something? Um, the problem is you to get like something the batteries are running to get something to go over that gap. We realised like that was obviously well, like one the best way is if it ran along this line. But we just couldn't think of anything to do it. So stop stop stop. Cotton edge and cotton Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, we're ready. Woo! <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Once we point it in, you can try and see the mechanism. Uh, if you go in there, uh, keep going, keep going. Uh, boom, boom, boom. No, the 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 ones. Oh the yeah, yeah. The, that's another thing. There's no control between them going at the same rate. And as we mentioned before, and if we pull one out, the back EMF created will make the other one go out as well. So it's quite difficult to get them at the same rate.